Hey guys, so it's a beautiful spring day here. I'm at the new property at Block Finger Lakes and I have a fun little project for us to do that's kind of like an inside outside project, which is crevice gardening in a container. If you've never heard of crevice gardening before, well, it's actually something that is getting quite popular in the landscape. It's a type of rock gardening, if you will. So you have like alpine gardening, which is also a type of rock gardening. Um, and then also crevice gardening, which essentially uses thin pieces of stone, like this flaggy shale stone that I have here, where you embed it within a substrate and you plant plants in between. And it actually looks really cool within a landscape. I'd actually love to do something like that here in this landscape. But for those of us who actually don't have a lot of space or may have a small balcony or fire escape or something that you could bring indoors, uh, like a little interesting succulent garden, this is something that you could actually do. So I have a fairly, this is actually a little more depth than I would typically have, but I really love the shape of this uh, planter. It's a concrete planter, but you could use lots of different things. You could use something like a hyper tufa. Um, you can make your own planters. You could use maybe a bonsai planter. And actually speaking of bonsai, that's actually what we're going to be using today. I have a Spoma organic bonsai mix, and this is clay and also expanded shale, which is perfect because our native stone here is shale. This is what shale looks like. And I've been pulling these out of the landscape. I've been finding them as I um, am planting in the landscape. And it's pretty interesting because some of them actually have fossils on them. So you could see one that has like this little brachiopod right here and here and here. So when I'm considering of doing this uh, container crevice garden, I might actually use some of those pieces and that could be kind of cool. I'm not gonna just use all um, bonsai mix here. I'm actually going to also mix it in with some Espoma organic cactus mix and maybe even some charcoal. And the, the charcoal, horticultural charcoal actually helps not only in uh, increasing drainage, but if you're going to have you know, a lot of water or if it's gonna rain a lot in uh, your neck of the woods, then this will prevent any type of bacterial buildup as well, or at least uh, inhibit bacterial buildup. So I'm just gonna do a, a nice mix of all of that. And since this container is large enough, I'm gonna do the mixing in this container. Now I actually did a, a workshop doing a container crevice garden before, and that was a lot of fun. So I'm looking forward to actually doing this with you. And the whole point is that you want something that's pretty well draining, especially if you're gonna put this outside. You want a mixture that, uh, especially because you're gonna be using a lot of succulent plants. And I should talk about the succulents for a minute here because I'm in zone five, for those of you who know your gardening zones, meaning it gets pretty cold in winter. And sure, you could probably use succulents that if you're just doing this as an indoor planting, then you know that's that's fine. But if you if you're going to leave this outside, then you want to use hardy succulents for your zone. And I've selected a number of hardy succulents for my zone. If you go to a garden center, then they'll likely be selling hardy succulents, uh, succulents that are perfect for your neck of the woods. And these are semper vivums. Some people know them as house leeks or hens and chicks. And the reason for that is that they get these little quote unquote pups or little chicks off the edges. And that's how they proliferate and propagate. You'll see that this one is busting at the seams here. I loved the color of these with the little reddish details. There's tons and tons of Semper Vivum cultivars. So it's, it's just endless. I also have some Semper Vivum arachnoidiums. And uh, I've grown these indoors, but they are actually pretty hardy for outside as well. And a lot of our hardy succulents, when you think about hardy succulents, you're like, wait, there's hardy succulents that grow in the cold? Yes, because not all succulents grow in desert conditions, of, meaning like hot desert condition. In some cases, 
they might be growing in alpine um, conditions where they, they have to endure a lot of uh, sun and wind and harsh climates. Um, uh, some other good hardy succulents are sedums. And some of the sedums, like so many plant genera, got like blown up and put into different um, uh, genera. But this is a sedum chocolate ball. Uh, I love the color of that one. It actually matches pretty well with the container. And this one is an example. I think it was a sedum. It was sedum seboldii. And now it's like hylotelphium or something like that, um, seboldii. But I really love this one. It's a beautiful hanging basket plant. It has that glaucous color, some pink edges, and it gets really beautiful pink flowers. And that's another thing. A lot of these succulents will get really, really beautiful flowers. Here I have a mix of things. This red one right here, I think is sedum. It might be called dragon's blood. Um, this one's a delosperma, very common, um, at least in this zone. And you can see it gets a nice yellow daisy-like flower. And then this one's also kind of cool, Cosmatophyllum masculinum. And this is a uh, hardy tiger's jaws, it's, it's often called. I think this comes from South Africa, if I'm not mistaken. So I wanna show you this because this is actually a new product from Espoma. the bonsai mix. And again, this uh, the orange that you have in here, that is the clay. And then this grayer kind of material right here, that's the puffed shale. And actually when I think about shale, it's a popular substrate for roof gardening. So if, if you're going to have this on your roof and you're growing sedum on your roof, for instance, you know, they'll often roll the sedum mat out on the roof. You want something that's really lightweight and then you also have these um, composted forest products. So you have these uh, pieces of bark as well. So I'm really just gonna put this whole bag in. And because I'm gonna have this outside, I will actually use some of the uh, charcoal as well. Struggling, okay, there you go. So here, and the, this is the horticultural charcoal. Now I suggest if you're actually doing this inside that you just be careful that some of this uh, powdery stuff doesn't go up into your nose or in your lungs. Luckily I'm out, outdoors so I have a bit more airflow here. So I'm just gonna mix this in with my hands. It's almost like a nice giant mixing bowl. And part of the purpose of this is that you're going to want your succulents to get water and not dry out, but you want it also to drain extremely well. And I don't know if this year is gonna be a rainy season or not so rainy season, but I, I wanna make sure that my substrate is, uh, is well draining. So this is a good height for this because I want to actually embed some of these stones now. And you want to embed these stones about, about a third of the way down. And this is exactly what you do. You're basically creating like a little mini landscape. And I'm gonna do the crevice garden at an angle. And part of the reason for that, you don't have to, you could, you could put it up and down like this, but part of the reason for that is that we are, we do have like cardinal directions, north, south, east, and west. And maybe some plants will want to be closer to the south and some will want to be shaded off from, um, from that harsh light during the day. So I'm gonna put these at an angle and I'm gonna wedge them right in. And you can see just like how cool this is already starting to look. At least I think it looks cool. I'll take this one right here and kind of wedge it in like that. And the idea behind the crevice garden is that you're basically recreating a landscape. And you know, maybe you have gone to landscapes that kind of look where you could see like the stones jutting out from the edge. And the idea is that you would start to plant the plants in between this crevice. And, uh, and like I said, I've seen this stuff in the wild, if you will, in the landscape. And I absolutely love it. I, I think I'll probably get into uh, crevice gardening. And if you actually want to see a video, we're gonna have an upcoming tour as well on, uh, on Flock Finger Lakes, which is our sister channel. All right, so this one's nice and thin. Kind of looks like it broke off here, but then this side looks a little bit too smooth. So I might pass on that one. This one's kind of cool, it has this, uh, ferrous looking color, this iron. That's like really 
flat on one edge. It's kind of, it's kind of neat. I kind of like this flaggy looking stuff though. That, see, all of a sudden this, this looks out of, out of place to those. So I might go with some smaller ones then. And I might put these up a little bit more. Maybe I could use this one. Yeah, that looks nice. And then I could use the fossil. Now, as you can imagine, um, this could get really heavy really fast, especially if you're using um, stone. So I would also recommend that if you are doing crevice gardening, especially in a container that, of this size, that you might want to plant it up where you're going to eventually like have your, your container because it could get pretty heavy. Um, I'm pretty confident that I'll be able to carry this. I'm, I'm fairly strong. <laughs> So I could probably manage this even when it's all planted up. All right, let's see what else I picked up from the ground. Something like this, and I might curve it in like this. Now I'm doing this relatively fast just to kind of demonstrate, but as you can imagine, this is something that, I don't know, I think this would be like fun just to do over the course of a couple hours and you just really lose yourself in this, if you will. Um, I don't know, it's just like a really fun and therapeutic experience to be able to design something like this. So I think this is gonna be roughly what my crevice garden is going to look like. So now I have the fun of actually doing some of the planting and oftentimes I'll try to try to take like a centerpiece or something that I think will will really work. And I love these colors. And when you're doing this kind of stuff in the landscape, I'm gonna just take some of this soil off. So nice to be able to do this outdoors and not get the house dirty. When you're actually even planting this in the landscape and not just in a container, you'd often leave or wrap the, the roots comes bare root, if the plant comes bare root, with some type of, type of um, humus or uh, rich soil mixture in with the, uh, so you wouldn't have it um, in total bonsai or rocky substrate, for instance. You'd have some element of, uh, of good soil. So that's part of the reason why I'm actually using um, the, some of the cactus mix. So I'm gonna have to fill more soil in here, but I'm just, starting to place things in to see how they look and to see if I like it. And I have these little guys that I had pulled off and I might plant those up in some other small area, maybe something like this. So if you're, you know, kind of designing landscapes as well, you usually like put the plants in the landscape and you say, oh, do I like that? and you're like, oh yeah, that, that looks pretty good. And then you don't plant it quite yet. You just kind of play around with it. So you're just placing it. Let's try this. Just kind of want to take these all out so that I have them to work with. And the good thing about some of these succulents too is that you could take them apart really easily and, uh, and separate them and divide them. So you don't have to plant them as one giant clump but it's too clumpy for me, so I'm gonna just take pieces of it out like that. So then I have multiples to work with. Same thing for this one. This is very clumpy. And I could really, you know, take this apart, unless I wanted to fully plant it like that, which I, I could technically. I like this and I'd like this maybe more towards the edge because uh, this is something, like I said, will kind of hang over. So I might uh, break this up a little bit. You can see what kind of substrate these were growing in. It uh, looks like it was more bark than anything else. So I might place this one in here. Eventually I'll have enough substrate that goes to about a half an inch. So I might have to raise these stones, especially the ones that are not as high up a little bit. So that looks kind of cool. I need something that will hold its own up here. 
you know what I mean? And maybe a little bit higher, like that. So I have to get more of that substrate. I like the way that looks. Might take a, some of this. Wrap this in like that. So I'm going to move these out. And what I'm going to do is add a bit more mixture to here. All right, so I see I'm losing a little light here, so I'm going to just move this over to the deck and I'm going to just sit down and plant this. Using this uh, sedum chocolate ball, very easy one to work with, but it's a it's a little floppy. So I'm just uh, adding that in there and kind of anchoring it into the substrate. So I used a little of the cactus and soil mix, and now I'm just adding a bit more of the bonsai soil mix on top of that. I think that looks good. Cool. It looks like the bottom of a sea floor actually. So you can see that, you know, this section right here, if it's not facing the sun, it's gonna be pretty shaded out by some of these plants. Um, and I know this one is gonna grow out. So if I put one under here, then it's probably gonna get really etiolated um, or leggy. So I'm just going to fill this in with bonsai and not worry about planting anything in that little dark corner. I love the color of this too. I think it contrasts nicely with the uh, with the plants as well as the stones. Should I bring another yellow one in there? The yellow looks better clumped together. So look at the little new one right here is giving a little green one. So it probably turns yellow and red as it ages. Some of this peaty mixture, free up some of the roots, and I will move this one forward and put another one right behind it. Just move this one forward a little bit. Another thing too, why I like these stones at an angle, especially if you're going to be um, leaving this outside, is that when it rains, the water will wash down, will hit the stone and go down into the roots. So that's also another good option. And if you break off a leaf, like I just did, I'll show you this. Don't worry too much about it because if it's a clean break, then some of that meristem or that growing area of the leaf will probably propagate itself. So I'll just leave that in there. Try to face these all up. Okay. Like that. We need to get enough substrate down in there. You want their roots covered with the substrate. You don't want them floating in air. So that's one of the challenges. You might even want to get a spoon and instead of a a little 
trowel. You might want to work with uh, smaller materials and tools to be able to get all the roots covered because you don't want those roots hanging out in the air. The roots need air in order to grow, but they don't want to be in total air. They just need air pockets. All right, let's save these guys. Plant these up just right in here. This one's so long. What I'm gonna do is just break this off. And what I'm gonna do is just slide that right back in there. And I'll root up. Some of your succulents will, will do that. They'll just uh, start to get leggy and you might not like that look. So something like this, you see it's starting to get a little, little leggy and uh, all you need to do is clip it and then plant it back in. Some of these Semper Vivum arachnoidiums look kind of cool. I don't have much space left for them, but I might put in a few of them. I like the color palette that they have because they have this uh, similar verdigious hue to this um, Hylotelophilium, right? So these are pretty resilient. They're a little crusty on the, the bottom, but if we give this a good water, I think they'll rebound. And if you've ever kind of been outside and you've seen like something that is like a little bit of an avalanche, you know, because especially this shale, it kind of breaks off and flakes off, um, then you're just like re basically recreating that. So I'm just gonna put the finishing touches on this, adding a little bit more bonsai mix here. And uh, I'm just gonna water this in. And essentially, this is gonna be an outdoor planter. Let's turn this on. Just give it a nice water down. And because this substrate is very airy, I'm not too worried about the roots over soaking with water and of course I am using a container with a hole in the bottom as well. So I just kind of flooded that and of course if you're going to be watering this then you're, you're probably going to want to water that um, outside so that <laughs> you don't have any kind of problems if you're doing this on the inside. But that's essentially it. This is my little container garden and I'll just let that uh, fully drain and I'll put this in a southern exposure so that it gets really intense light um, during the day and that way when I water something like this that it'll be able to dry out relatively quickly as well. So there you have it. If you're looking to up your plant game, then check out our suite of courses and offerings, including Houseplant Basics, Troubleshoot Your Houseplants, the 125 Houseplant Care Spreadsheet, and the Houseplant Masterclass. The courses provide you a certificate of completion when you're finished, and a wealth of information that you can use to impress both your plants and your friends. More information can be found over at homesteadbrooklyn.com. And if you're seeking more information about gardening outdoors and homesteading in the country, then check out our new channel over at Flock Finger Lakes.